In the Jag Whiffing Service by David R. Bunch from Worlds of If, February 1959. I had always said there was an easier way, and I think when we invade, I'll be proved right. But you know how things get started, and how powerful tradition can be, and how old line thinking can keep people, even a whole planet, in a rut? The big cargo saucers were getting bigger and bigger each year, what with the growing popularity of the Jagwiff places. And the Jagwiff places themselves were growing in number with more and more people going on the Jag because, well, partly because of troubles in the sky, like strange balls whirling around and unexplainable objects going beep and woof woof woof. We of the saucers had slipped past these first baby objects okay, and they knew we were just little old harmless ping-pongs that chattered a little now and then, like a greeting going past. But tell people that. They'd throw a big glass on one of the whirlers and see spikes sticking out and maybe a big pair of eyes inside and a nose and a long red tongue hanging down. The earthits, they'd screamed, like they'd just fallen into one of the hot canals and they'd race off to jag with jag like Judgment Day of Sins and Self was after them. And the funny part of it is, I guess the people were right being scared like that, the way things turned out. But is it any wonder we were having to increase the size of the saucers to space haul all that jag whiff up through the rattle balls? And a big reason makes me think it could have been done more efficiently. We were having to take so much junk stuff extra accessories, I guess you'd call it, to get the jag whiff. Our earth at contacts were always giving us the old breeze about cost of labor, cost of materials, improvement in design, and next year's inventories. Apparently the dealers didn't understand at all what the play was with us, because they gave us so much blab blab that didn't apply. All about futuristic design, and about how one jag whiffer machine had it all over another Jag Whiffer machine, which to us didn't mean a thing. And we didn't talk, because we'd already heard how some Earthits feared the saucers, and how some Earthits said they didn't exist at all, and how some other Earthits were on the fence, saying maybe they did, maybe they didn't, so what? And how there was wide fear and great unrest among the Earthits in general. And when it's like that, and you're a possible source of the wide fear and unrest, a whole planet full of people can easily decide they don't want any part of contributing to your pleasure. And that's what the Jag Whiff was to us, actually. Pleasure. Back home, when our troubles had us down, or maybe we just felt like raising a little dust, we'd go to a Jag Whiff place. We'd plunk down our pay pictures, and the Whiff tender would wheel out one of those black rings which they have to keep under special pressures in our climate. Then he'd screw on the tube with the face piece and we'd take our whiff and something out of the black ring. Just seemed like real thick chest filler to me. Would spread all through the farthest reaches of our breath bags and go into our blood. And suddenly all five of our eye sticks would start whirling and focusing and zeroing in for dances and our arms and legs would start a kick and a slap dance, enough to shake the planet down. And when our face spines and head tubes would go into that special sharp buzz of contentment, we'd know we were on our jag, full and warm and happy, with as much pleasure as any Martian is ever supposed to know. But we never revealed the play to our Earth at contacts, just slipped in at night in our noiseless saucers with all lights dimmed, cleared our cargo tubes of the tons of pay picture we'd brought, green copy of the Earth its currency, and take on as many of the gleaming jet whiffer machines as our cargo tubes would hold. But it is 10 years now since a jag whiffer captain had steered his saucer through the whirling balls. It got so the satellites would drum on the saucer for a long way out. Deafening, dreadful. We saw what was coming and we tried to beat it. We saucered around the clock for a while trying to stockpile enough jag whiff to last us. But of course, we couldn't. We are about out of it now, and our land is strewn with the glittery shells that were once attached to the black tubes of Jagwiff. 
and it could all have been done so different. I'm sure it could. That stuff wasn't just in the tubes of the Jagwiffer machines down there. I'm convinced of that. That stuff may have been all around us down there. I believe it was. But our government would insist we get into these suits about so far out, you see, about the time we'd start contacting the rattle balls. And they threatened us with the removal of the contacts if we broke the rules about the suits. In addition to that, they said we'd die anyway. So you see how life can be, grim and fuzzy and unsafe most of the time. And to make things even more uncertain, just because they couldn't duplicate the product we were hauling, our scientist got uppity and ignored the whole problem. Except to run off to the Jagwiff places, of course, to ease their frustrations, which they did plenty often when they thought they wouldn't be seen. But when we invade down through there, which we plan to do soon now, with our special equipment to catch and explode the whirly balls, I think we're going to find out plenty. Among other things, I think we're going to find out that the stuff we cargoed up here at such great cost, that was so inefficiently packaged, is all around us down there. I think when we take over down there, with the right filtering equipment, jagwiffing may become as common and economical as breathing. And another thing, I think we're going to find out we were taken for quite a ride by the Earthits with their silly way of packaging Jagwiff. Imagine having to buy all that chrome and steel, guaranteed to go over 100 miles per hour, just to get four little black rings of whiff. And for all the Earthits talked about it, the rings with the white sidewalls didn't whiff one bit better than the others. In the Jag Whiffing Service, by David R. Bunch, from Worlds of If, February 1959, read by Jean-Paul Garnier.